out to California with dreams of becoming a filmmaker when I was barely an adult. I started making short films because I didn't know what else to do. It was just whatever I had, a, an old camcorder and whoever would come play with me. I made dozens of short films for years. Ready? On three! Three! Oh, 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 oh! All the while, I had this idea for my first feature. Anybody I met, being like, hey, if you know anybody who like wants to partner up or, or put a little money into this and make a movie, nothing ever happened. And that went on, done countless jobs, like industrial videos, whatever work comes along. And then finally, all of us at that point were like, all right, this is just never gonna happen. You're not, you don't get a movie funded. We're either just gonna make it or we're done. And so we made Bellflower. And that took three years from the day we started shooting. And at the end, everybody was pretty much, you know, when we finished the movie, we were like, our lives are ruined. We shouldn't have done this. No one cares about it. No one wants to see it. We don't know how to get it out into the world. And um, that's 10 years in to the process of trying to, you know, become a working filmmaker. And then all of a sudden Sundance happened and this whole explosion happened. We got all, all this attention and these awesome reviews and the movie got sold and all over the world theatrical releases and then I was in magazines on TV and all this just crazy stuff that I never would have believed would happen. Hello world, I'm Evan and uh, this is it. This is uh, the beginning of round two, the story of Coat Wolf and Canary. All right, a lot of time went fucking by. I've been trying to make Canary since just a couple months after Bellflower came out, so late 2011. And then we were gonna do an Indiegogo campaign to raise money for Canary before we even talked about doing San Diego Twins. <laughs> and so we, we switched and decided to do the Indiegogo campaign for, for John Keeble's movie, San Diego Twins, uh, because we thought for sure my movie would get funded because of Sundance, Spirit Awards, theatrical release, critical acclaim. And so after Bellflower, all these people came and I just turned down million dollar jobs, A-list jobs. Some jobs that I think the budget ranges were close to $100 million. And I was just like, no, if it doesn't line up with something that I believe is gonna help the world and help people, I won't fucking do it. But I've got this script and this is what I think, this will do that. Yeah. I'm afraid it's a machine. Why? Because it's gonna hurt me. I'm not gonna let it hurt you. You can't control it. Yes, I can. I can. How? It's electricity. It's not fire. Fire is about destruction. Electricity is about connection. Electricity connects things. You force it to build up in one place. And then when there's enough of it that it can't take being there, it'll see somewhere else where there's none, and it'll jump there. As soon as I pulled that out, everybody's like, sorry, no. So then, fast forward another seven years of running around trying to get the thing made that I cared about. And I've not stopped trying, we've not stopped shooting things, but I've yet to have a project funded. So I fucking cracked. Um, I cracked and I'm like, okay, well, it's either, you know, find a different career, kill yourself, or, uh, go back and do what we did on Bellflower, which is basically make another movie with nothing and slam your life into the ground deeper than you already have. We swore after Bellflower that we would not make a movie again for no money. But it looks like that's exactly what we're about to do. It's always been a challenge. It's always been hard. Like we've never had it easy. We've never had the right amount of money. We've never had the right resources. And, uh, you know, it, with Bellflower, we just had to go out there and prove it, you know, just rough and tumble, whatever it took, you know, shooting for a hundred days in a row. <laughs> yes. You're right. Grouchy neighbor, take one. Got a little bit easier with, uh, with San Diego Twins, but still, even with that, like the only reason that that movie got made was because of 
crowdfunding because people like our Patreon supporters who believed in us. We're gonna burn you guys up with a plane cover. Started making Canary in 2011. Movies are crazy. I think they're the most important thing we have, telling stories, and that's, that's the dri been the driving force for me in this project, is that I really believe in what the story is that we have to tell with these two characters, and in the importance of honesty and trust, and that it's not perfect and it never is going to be, but how you deal with it is, is key in life. And I've taken what I've learned making this movie into every area of my life since. I started calling everybody I knew, and I was like, look, I'm finishing this movie with, you know, whatever I have. And, uh, and a few things looked like they started falling into place. I talked to the foreign sales agent that did Bellflower, and I was like, hey, is there any way you can raise a little bit of money for, like, foreign pre-sales for this movie, even though we don't have famous actors or whatever? And he was like, yes, I think I can. So he was going to give us $25,000. So this is already this is a step up from Bellflower, but it's still really scary because you're going into a movie with not enough money to finish, so you don't really know what you're going to do. A big part of the plan was Patreon. We really launched the Patreon for, for you guys. Thank you, Patreon! And we're like, that'll be some steady income so that we won't just completely die. We're just gonna go and whatever that is, we'll go shoot. Even if the movie has to be like a backyard thing, we get to finish the story. And then our friends Shane and Amy came to town. Shane and Amy are part of our Coat Wolf extended family. And we went over just to visit them. This is all at the same time all this stuff is happening. So we're at Shane and Amy's house, electrocuting them for fun. <laughs> <laughs> they gave us mushrooms. Am I supposed to be telling you guys this? I don't fucking know. Uh, they gave us mushrooms, and uh, and we were all having fun. They weren't. They weren't actually drug mushrooms, though, because Shane and Amy are very respectable people, and they wouldn't do drugs. It was like stuffed mushrooms or something like that. They were like, "We've been working a lot. Just take our money. We're literally just gonna do a bank transfer right now into your account with like a napkin contract saying we gave you X amount of money." So we're like, all right, awesome, we have a plan. We have Patreon and Shane and Amy and this foreign sales thing going in the background that might bring in more money. We're like, go. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, a real company came along. They're like, stop everything you're doing right now. Forget about your friend's money. Forget about pre-sales. We just want to give you what you're asking for, the whole number, the full budget. Give us two weeks to get stuff sorted with our lawyers, and you're going to have the money, and you guys are go. We were like, holy shit, it finally fucking happened. This is a miracle. So now we've got... Two weeks to kill. We just we, we just went from we just went from full force like running forward and being like we're gonna make this movie finish it right now with whatever we have to being put into waiting zone. So now basically I'm I'm going insane. So I need something to do to keep myself occupied while we're waiting, or I'm I'm gonna go nuts. There's a girl outside with the flamethrower, dude. <laughs> so we decided uh, we're going to build this electric bicycle. That should easily take up two weeks. Evan Glodell. He's a builder. He's a crazy man. <laughs> Evan can't not be making something. That's the beauty of it. So when movies aren't happening, He's building machines, and he's been that way since the day I've met him, and it seems to be that's how he's always been, and, and that takes a certain kind of mind, and it's fascinating because he can't just be still. That's a child's play flamethrower. I think his creative work in the two areas, building something and, and making a film, uh, exists together, and one complements the other, which is why you see a lot of the things he builds in his movies, the Medusa, you know, motorcycles, di different things and, and Canary is going to be a major piece of that puzzle for him. You know, it's, it's fascinating because I don't know a lot of people that can do that. They can split their mind in half like that. He gets a lot of his ideas when he's building something for his projects. And he gets a lot of ideas while he's filming for things he wants to fucking build. And, that's, and he actually does it, which is crazy. Whoa, whoa, nope. And we blew something up. Hold on. Oh shit. Uh, back off, that might blow up in a second. I've been obsessing over building electric vehicles for since I was a kid. I built a three-wheeled electric tricycle 
when I was in middle school that was like me and my friend's car, and it was awesome. Uh, and then I, have, I wanted to, all this technology is advanced, so I wanted to build a, an electric bicycle because they're so, they can be like super fast and super lightweight. Uh, and not that complicated, so it seems like a really cool vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> test uh, number two. This is an acceleration test for the most extreme acceleration. It does kind of go. You yeah, that was no pretty good. Power. So all of a sudden, out of nowhere, got hired to go document the fastest electric vehicle on the planet. So that's, that's just a weird coincidence. We went to the Bonneville Salt Flats. The hill? Just ended up in the snow, dude. I know, it's crazy. I'm in fucking sandals. <laughs> so these guys have had the land speed record for electric vehicles for like 10 years, and they just keep breaking their own record. No one's competing with them, really. This is the year that they are expecting to break the electric vehicle land speed record, and it's going to be the same speed as the internal combustion engine land speed record. And, uh, and I'm like, holy shit, this is like landmark in history. The brains came early, turned the salt flats into a magical Jesus lake that you could walk on. And it totally got flooded out. So we didn't get to see the car run, but uh... But it's okay, because our money's coming in any day. A lot of time has passed at this point. Uh, we thought we were getting the money three months ago. So it's been, what, three months and two weeks or something. And the bicycle's completely done. It's a functioning vehicle that's been taking me around the neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm starting to go crazy. I think all of us are. Again, me and Joel have been in the house at this point, just kind of going nuts, trying to not drink ourselves to death, which is something that you do when you have nothing else to do. And then the contracts came in. The contracts finally came in. Uh, so we're stoked again. Oh, hey. <laughs> I said this is it. And we're going to sign the contract. This makes it real. I told, I always tell Evan that it's not real until you actually sign something. What's that in your hand? That's the contract for Canary. We're going to sign it and get it notarized, which Conveniently, there's a notary place across the street at the UPS store. I mean, this is like the scariest moment because uh, I have to sign this, then they have to sign it. And they're in? Yeah. And then we have to get kind of the main people's contracts, like Joel's contracts, Olivia's contracts, Chelsea's contracts. And you have to give all of those things to them before it's really official, although that's how it always is. Yeah. So. This is the, this, if, if I sign this and it doesn't fall apart, this will be the first time anyone has ever funded one of my movies in my life. It says no to require in that one. I assume that's what matters, right? Really hard over there. All right, wait, so I have to sign it? This is, this is, like, it. This is like really yeah, scary. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> sign it, dude. All right, signing my life away, all of our lives. Yep. I can't fucking believe it. Evan actually signed the contract. Anyway, I assume there's only for this R chance so I but um what's the code to um there, nice and sloppy. The way it's supposed to be. So just flat. Just flat right there. Damn. Cool. There you go. Here's the part where uh, where Joel has to pay for it because I have no money. <laughs> I already said that we've been through this before with multiple companies where we thought it was a go and it wasn't. If, if, if we sign a contract that says, you know, you're gonna give me $50 and I'm gonna kill these two people and give you my firstborn child, it doesn't mean anything until I get my $50 or until I kill the people. So this stuff doesn't really mean anything. Like until we've like delivered a movie, which we need the money to do, or until money's come into our hands, the contract means nothing. And the thing could fall apart with no one at fault. So we're we're getting scared at this point. Joel, what? What are you doing? I'm sad. We're like in this cycle, or every day we wake up, hoping that the the, the money's gonna come in, and it doesn't. It's an exercise in stubbornness. 
That's what that's what this last round of life has been for me. If you want to make films and do them on your own terms, you have to be so stubborn that you already went 10 steps past what people would normally call insane. I went over to Evans and as soon as I walked in, I could tell that a lot of wheels have been spinning. A lot, a lot, a lot of, uh, I'm not gonna say it was depressing. It was just, they needed to go outside. Our friend Clayton was like, Joel and Evan, you guys have been going crazy in the house too long and it's dangerous. Come to my house, set up in my garage. We can build in here and just really just change locations. Maybe if that'll help turn the universe in a positive direction. The motorcycle that we used in Chuck Hank, which was just my motorcycle that's been sitting in Chelsea's yard waiting to be restored. We brought it back to life and painted it real quick to just use for a couple shots in Chuck Hank. I've never done a motorcycle build like a proper one, so me and Clayton and Joel now decided decided to rip that completely apart and like just make a custom motorcycle because why not? We've now been going insane for close to seven months. And uh, I just want to say, I don't think this is necessarily anybody's fault. Like, we've never been through this before. When we decided to make Bellflower, there was no, there was no contracts, and there was no money, there was no nothing, because there was just a small group of people who were like, let's do this. And we just went and made the movie. And that's all that happened. And at the end, when we sold the movie, all of a sudden we're like, they're like, you don't have contracts? I'm like, no, we don't have contracts. And everybody's like, well, what do you think everybody deserves? And we all just kind of sat down and figured it out. And we're like, done, it was that easy. So this has, been, this has been a learning experience for us, this, much different. I like your shoes. Thank you. I don't want you putting the camera at me. <laughs> All right, that's the Canary account. I'll look at my password. <laughs> So the money came in. The money came in. The fucking money came in. So I can't show you what's on the screen here, but there is a number in our movie bank account that is a bigger number than I've ever seen. <laughs> no way. <Yeah. laughs> the money came in. It's actually real. So why does that matter? Why is that such a big deal over here? Uh, that money actually came in. It was the first time it's ever happened. It was the first time it's ever happened. It was the first time that a, 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 a film company with real resources and good people um, have financed one of our projects. I was getting ready to go to work to set and I get a phone call from Evan. He's like, it's happening. What do you mean? <laughs> what do you do now? <laughs> we have to make it now. I was talking to Tyler and I was like, so this, so this Colt Wolf, it's like a gang. He's like, yeah, we're like a, a film family that just sticks together through projects and we have each other's backs, no matter what. And I was like, well, what can I do to stay involved and to be a part of this? And he was just like, dude, all you gotta do is just stick around. The community feeling of filmmaking, that's I think what I love the most is, you know, over the years we've, through projects, each project, we sort of like accumulate new people. It's just, it's a, this like ragtag group of misfits where like, I think all of us sort of have this thing that binds us together where it's, you know, we've had hard lives or we felt rejected or we felt like Hollywood wouldn't accept us or the world didn't accept us. I never really dreamed that I would be a filmmaker. It was more just like I saw like a space that needed to be filled. It's like a small collective group of people who are really tight and all like work together and they all like do their different things and everyone kind of like pitches in and does everything that has to be done and just like filling all the spaces that are empty. It's a gang I'm pretty proud to be in. I mean, since the day I got my Colt Wolf tattoo, I will have and will never turn back from, from this shit. I love this. I don't care if a project takes one year or 10 years, I'm in. This is, this is the thing I care about the most in my life. Cold Wolf is a, is a makeshift family um, of human beings who make movies and build things with the hopes that it's going to make the world a better place and, and make our lives better. Go to CBS News' David Goldstein now, who has uh, been live in Ventura all day long.
David, how's it looking out there? Well, the wind is starting to kick up here, but we're at Cliffside and Valley View. Hi, Joel. What's up, man? What's going on, dude? The air is real nasty. Ventura burned. At the same time the money comes in, Ventura catches on fire. We shot 90% of Bellflower in Ventura. The heart of Coat Wolf is in Ventura. Like, that's where we're all from, and that's where we all have moved to. That's like our home base. Almost every single person in our group and in my family have all been evacuated by the fire on all sides of it. It's like really weird. I'm a Ventura Avenue refugee. It's a strange time. It's a strange time, you know? There's been a lot of ups and downs. There's a couple of points in the journey when I felt like I wasn't going to make it through. And then finally, the thing that I was asking for my entire life, to be able to have one of my films funded, and it happens as the city burns around us. I believe that movies are important. Like, really important. I believe that movies, you know, when done properly and focus on the right subjects and topics are what makes the world grow, it's what heals the world, it's what makes the world a better place, it's what helps all society grow. This, 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 is, this is the moment. This is the moment when, it, I mean, I know everybody else in the group, because there's a lot of people who have time and energy and love and just life invested in what's happening. But, like, for me, this is the moment when I find out if I fucked up. <laughs> I was like, did, did, was it a good idea to turn down those huge projects because you didn't believe, not even that they were bad projects, but I just didn't believe that was what I was supposed to do. It's time to go. It's time to make Canary. We got our, we got our movie fun. It just happened. <laughs> and we're going to document the entire process from beginning to end. We did it. We did it. <laughs> we're either going to kill it on this movie and, and maybe the world's going to see that what we're doing is worthwhile or make some mid-level indie film that just goes, comes and goes, we're going to find out. Is, is the dream real? Can you actually come up into this world doing it your way and actually eventually make a living and have the whole thing fucking go? Or are we just crazy people? The part, the most desperate part, where it looked like this whole thing was going to fall apart, um... You guys kept us alive. We just want to say thank you. This is going to be our way to, to do what we promised when we launched this thing, is to let you guys in our world. And uh, hopefully this format works out. So this is our, our weird secret TV show that we have with you guys. Um, and we're going to bring you along to see what the hell happens, whether, whether we succeed or fail, and what the hell happens in between.